Well, we'd all love to have a sterilizing cure where you know we have a vaccine mm -hmm. and 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 um, uh, and people don't get HIV, and we all or or that we have um, an approach for those already infected uh, that can be similar to a vaccine and and really remove HIV from the body. Hi, besties! Welcome back to another episode of this HIV cure series, and this is the last one. This time, we will be back again and continue following me on Instagram for the live sessions because I do host live conversations on IG uh, with scientists and professors working around the HIV cure. Today's episode is with Dr. Roger Shapiro. He is a scientist who's worked with the children living with HIV, especially from the African region, uh, specifically Botswana. And we are going to hear from him on what he has to say and also giving us the hope, answering the question on how close are we to a HIV cure for children. So listen in. My name is Roger Shapiro. Mm -hmm. I'm a uh, professor of immunology and infectious diseases at the Harvard T.H. Chan School uh, of Public Health in Boston. And I also uh, perform research at the Botswana Harvard uh, Health Partnership mm -hmm. in Botswana. We, we have a lot of challenges mm -hmm. uh, um, and a lot of opportunities as well. Children need to be diagnosed early in life mm -hmm. in order to have them best clinical outcomes and also the best reservoir outcomes, mm -hmm. the lowest amounts of virus in their body. And so we are uh, really trying to um, first start with those who have the best chance of succeeding mm -hmm. in the in the clinical trials. Uh, and, and that means kids who are diagnosed really close to birth. So we, we're following a cohort that uh, are diagnosed and started on ART in the first week of life. Uh, and then later in life, we're um, trying to see what cure interventions uh, can be most successful. We have a range of, of children from two years to about uh, eight years right now mm -hmm. uh, being followed. We started following all of them when they were born. And so all the children in the, in the current cohort uh, have, have started ART in the first week of life. Uh, and are generally doing really well on ART, mm -hmm. and we think they're great candidates for cure research. It's a great question. For a, a lot of years, people have asked, you know, why give BNAVs? We have such great ART. Yeah. But really, you have to think about this as, you know, what, what can we do differently to try to get to post-treatment control? And what I mean by that is, you know, people who can be treated for a period of time, whether adults or children, and then go off of that treatment and stay controlled uh, without any treatment. And so BNEBs, are, it's starting to be clear that BNEBs offer something different than what standard ART can offer. And uh, there's been some really exciting data here at this conference about the potential for BNEBs in adult studies to um, allow people to ultimately get to a, a post-treatment control uh, place at a higher percentage than with just standard ART alone. Mm -hmm. And so, um, you know, it's that, you know, potential and, you know, and the mechanism for that is still being worked out. There's a, um, a thought that there's a vaccinal effect of, mm -hmm. of BNEPs where they can actually train uh, your own immune system to uh, someone's, own, someone's own immune system to recognize and uh, fight HIV, uh, and in a way that's a little bit different than what normal ART, our usual ART, um, can do. So we're excited about that possibility. It's all really early days. Mm -hmm. We don't know yet whether um, what the success, you know, you know, rates will be. I think that the ethical considerations are the same as with adults. Mm -hmm. uh, um, I, I would never put any child into a study that I wouldn't put my own child into. That's, that's a rule that I follow, um, I, but it, we obviously have many more considerations. Mm -hmm. um, there's been a lot of discussion uh, in recent years about what, um, who, could, 
what's the right strategy for uh, using an ATI or an analytic treatment interruption? Mm -hmm. So that's when we are in very um, careful uh, circumstances take the, we, we test for um, uh, the post treatment control that we're looking for, the effect that we're looking for, and you really can't do re cure research without an ATI, without uh, uh, seeing what happens when you actually stop and you know therapy, whether that's ART or BNAPs. And uh, there's you know really careful guidelines. We work closely with uh, IRBs uh, in, in Botswana and also uh, in the United States and. Um, and we are, you know, doing this work in the setting of a clinical trial. Uh, we're monitoring really closely, and um, and I think that um, the the, the risk benefits here are something we talk about with every participant. Uh, so far, most of the parents who want we, we we've approached with with this research are interested in it, and they're interested for a, a lot of reasons. Uh, ART is hard to give every day. They know that there are complications from the, the ART itself and and they are willing to, you know, discuss you know being in a trial and, and the potential risks that any cure research trial has uh, with us um, in order to have that benefit of being off ART for a period of time. And there are, there really are some potential benefits. We've seen some indication that children grow better mm -hmm. off off ART. Uh, and, and certainly the, the standard side effects of ART um, are not there when we're in an ATI phase. So, we, you know, we're, we're, again, it's really early phases of this research, um, and we are all working with the community and with everybody in Botswana and elsewhere to make sure that it's done carefully and safely. Since 2015, the BNAPs have gotten better and better and better, and really over the last decade, we're seeing more options in terms of products available, and uh, the, the newer studies are all, all using longer-acting formulations, mm -hmm. which allow dosing either every one month or every two months. We're hoping that we will keep extending that so that they can be given even less frequently in the future. Uh, the specific combinations is something that everyone is working out right now. We, we don't know yet whether there's a particular combination that works better than any other. Mm -hmm. We do think that uh, to really get, the, get control of the virus with BNAPs, it's important to have at least two and probably three BNAPs. And there's susceptibility testing, just like with regular ART, we have susceptibility testing that we can do. It's a little harder to do with the BNAPs, a little uh, less well worked out than we have for ART, but we do we can do susceptibility testing uh, to, to try to figure out which combinations work best for each individual participant. Well, we know our kids really well because we've been following them <laughs> since they were born, yeah. and um, and we can only offer the trial to certain kids who qualify. Yeah. So the first thing we do is we, we screen and we and we make sure that um, based on our entry criteria that the, the child looks like they're going to qualify, okay. and then we talk to the to the parents and the guardians and we and we go through the trial and uh, most of the time they are they. They want to talk and they want to hear about what's new. Mm -hmm. uh, some of the kids sort of stay in a holding pattern where if they're not eligible for a trial, mm -hmm. we will keep following them clinically. Mm -hmm. um, but then the kids that are able to jump into the trial uh, can, can do so. Uh, and it really depends on each trial. Mm -hmm. In our current trial, we're really looking to put our best foot forward. So we want kids with uh, um, either no or very few rebounds in la in, in uh, prior to the study, mm -hmm. uh, children doing really well on ART, mm -hmm. uh, and so we have certain criteria such as not rebounding within a certain period of time before the study, and we also look at, as they go through each step of the study, there are different criteria, and by the time they get to the ATI, mm -hmm. the actual treatment interruption, only a, a select group of kids that we think have the best chance of succeeding mm -hmm. uh, will go into that.
Well, we'd all love to have a sterilizing cure where you know we have a vaccine mm -hmm. and 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 um, uh, and people don't get HIV, and we all or or that we have um, an approach for those already infected uh, that can be similar to a vaccine and and really remove HIV from the body. I think realistically, mm -hmm. what, what the field is looking at are um, what sometimes called functional cures or what we call post-treatment control, where we can give a series of um, interventions, um, ART given in a particular way, ART combined with BNABs, on, off ART and BNABs, we're working on that, we're trying to figure out the best combination mm -hmm. that will train a person's immune system mm -hmm. to control the virus on their own and then allow a period of time, an extended period of time, off ART. So uh, that is not as good as saying there's no more HIV in your body, but it's, I think, a more realistic goal in the near term for, for those living with HIV. Don't forget to comment, don't forget to like, don't forget to subscribe, and I will see you on another episode. Thank you so much, Vestis. Love you. Bye.